Lil Yachty, welcome to the DTFH. I gotta tell you, man, I am so excited to talk to you. I can't believe we are talking at all. So, hello. It's really hello. nice to meet you. Hello, likewise. Um, may I ask? So, did did you did you start uh, in stand up comedy? Yes, I did at the comedy store. Okay, and so where's that in LA? That's in LA. Yeah, that's in LA. That's Polly Shore's mom is this was this sort of guru of comedy, and she created this place called the Comedy Store, which she wanted to be an artist colony for comics. So it's just it's a, it was always and probably still is just a madhouse where you get to perform and learn how to do stand up. Uh, you know, it sounds cheesy to say a lot of comics consider it a kind of temple. It's a cult. Stand up comedy is really, as you I'm sure, you know, is a really bizarre profession. Uh, yeah. There's no clear cut path other than getting on stage as much as you can. And so it, it's sort of a place designed to like weed out people who aren't willing to go through the uh, difficulties involved in mm -hmm. like getting stage time and uh that. which is a, 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 a mitzi looked at that as a compassionate act you know even though many comedians thought they were being tortured Damn. by getting like spots at 1 a.m for a year straight following is that like, wait, is like it, a, a, a spot at 1 a.m is bad oh god wait what time do you start performing usually like when do you go on stage uh, when you're doing about shows? like 8 39 yeah okay yeah 8.39, that's a nice time to perform. So 1 a.m., 1 a.m., when you go on stage at 1 a.m., man, you are, it's like you have been in line at one of those, like, disgusting porn conventions where, like, 50 mm. people get to hump somebody, and you're, like, one of the last couple of people, <laughs> except in this case, that person is the audience. Yeah. The, the audience has been, they have has been made love to, the audience has been fucked, the audience has been insulted, and then you have to go up in front of hammered people, <laughs> hammered, and try to make them laugh. And so that was part of her deal. I've never really thought too deep into it, and I, and I didn't, that's fucked. It's yeah. fucked, but yeah. it makes you good. It makes you good, because it's like, if you could make an audience of drunks at 1.30 a.m., who have seen maybe Chris Rock, who've seen Dave Chappelle, who've seen Louis C.K. that night, if you can get even a slight laugh out of them, then when you do finally work your way up to a normal audience, then you've, you're have you probably pretty good. Like, you know how to, how to work with the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Have okay. you ever thought about it? You ever thought doing, about it? Yeah. Do it, doing stand-up? Yeah. Absolutely not. I love laughing though, and I love jokes, and uh, I'm I'm more I'm my like kind of a, like it's interesting. Like, I, one thing I do do is if I'm doing a show, which is really rare, it's really rare. But if I'm doing a show and the energy is just like really low, and they're just not like just not turning up with me, I do then start doing jokes. You know, <laughs> it's something I do. I got like like if I'm just like in front of a crowd that is just super stale, I just start telling jokes and like cracking jokes to like ease the crowd up especially if it's like a group of people just like looking real tough or just trying to be like super like i don't know just like a like a man it's like mm, i don't move i don't yeah. dance i just stand i'm just tough and i start cracking some jokes to loosen people up and let them know like hey man i'm like you know i'm a human just like you a lot of people sometimes tend to think that celebrities or musicians aren't human you know or like just yeah. like you know celebrities are just like slightly different and like don't have emotions Ooh, excuse me don't have emotions or don't have feelings or don't you know like operate you know don't like privacy or or since we're a celebrity or a public figure that we should be used to not having any privacy yeah or should understand our privacy being compromised to you know in mid chew at dinner to want to take a picture you know yep. or to like and then and, while well, just being broken up with your girlfriend still hey can you take sign this autograph you know like or whatever you know just yeah. like in the moment of anything like it's like fuck what you're going through i'm here and i see you and i want whatever i want yeah you're like a mall santa claus you're like a mall santa claus that's just wandering the world 
they see you. There's no sense of like, oh, that's a human. They're just yeah. like, let me sit on your lap. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you what I want? Mm-hmm. I mean, again, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm, ge- I'm guessing this is not my daily experience, but I can't imagine for you what that is like. I mean, I certainly have friends where I've witnessed this reality and mm-hmm. you realize like, oh my God, what a strange trap you've managed to get yourself into. It's like you've, you've gotten yeah. into this odd thing that like, you know, how do you even come? It's like you, even though it is I, lonely, pro- lonely, you feel dehumanized. Absolutely. At how times. Do you complain yeah. about it, but you can't to complain oh, about but you it. You can't. No, you can't. No, 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 no. That's, no, no, that's, no. that's that, that's that gray area because I mean, any com- any complaint just makes you look. I don't know. Away, it's like oh, it's like oh, the the rich celebrity, you know, I, and you know, like I don't know, but I but see another thing is I've never been a person to complain ever. You know why? Because right. I've always understood, no matter what the situation was, I was still blessed. You know, like I like yeah. I, I haven't I haven't been a celebrity or musician for my entire life. I'm 25. I started at 17. I took off at 18. So six months after I graduated high school. Um, but 17 years of my life, I lived in the same house with my mother and my sister. Well, my sister wasn't born yet for 17 years, but I was my mother and my sister. And uh, I lived a normal life and I was a regular kid, you know, so my life changed overnight. And so no matter what I've ever went through in my seven years of doing music, I've always, I've, I've never, I, I, I try rarely to ever stress or get mad or upset or anything, even when something's bothering me, because I just, it's always in my implement in my mind, like, man, I am blessed to even be able to have this type of problem to be in this situation, right. you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And also what does complaining do? I mean, it doesn't really, it's ineffective no. in correcting mm-hmm. whatever it is that's fucked up in your life. At least, oh God, if only it worked. Wouldn't that right. be great if just complaining <laughs> yeah. about shit corrected the actually, problem? Yeah. No, that would be actually crazy. But oh. it doesn't. It doesn't. No. Well, except for, except for depending on in certain situations, like maybe like when you have some, when you're complaining to someone who cares, you know, like whether it's your girlfriend or your wife or or someone who actually gives a shit about what you're complaining about, then yes. maybe that leads to a conversation of, of uh, you know, cause and effect. Like, how can we fix this? Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, you should. It's definitely good to, with the people closest to you, to let them know what's bugging you. you I'm just talking about that. I don't know if you do this, but you ever wake up in the morning and go, fuck this. Fuck mm. this. This is fucked. No. I don't want to do a day, another day. No. That does not that does nothing Absolutely as far not. as I can tell. It just sets Absolutely your day not. off. I have sets to ask your day you, off. Sets your day way off. Now mm-hmm. I want to jump into the deep water with you. We okay. have a limited time here. And uh uh you've done LSD over a hundred times. Over a hundred times you've taken yes. LSD. Now that is an admirable accomplishment for someone who is 25. I think it took me <laughs> <laughs> it took me a few more years to reach that number. I wasn't yeah. quite in there, you know, because there's a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I think part of it is because of your where you're at. It's easier to at- obtain mm-hmm. LSD now. Look, I'm not going to go old man on you here, <laughs> but you must understand, y'all are existing in a great time in human history. When I was coming up, there was an LSD drought. I don't know if you ever heard of this. People don't really, really? talk about that. Really? There was an, there was an, LS, there was an LSD boom, which was this, uh, there were some people literally in an underground missile silo. These yeah, hippies I know were, that. Yes. So that was just acid everywhere. They were very. Oh, wait, was this, was this around the time when they were like trying to ban it? This, no, this was post prohibition. Prohibition, yes. So when the CIA introduces LSD to, uh everybody they're trying to come up with a mind control drug and and so they're testing it at universities they give acid to college kids around your age you know what that's going to do it's going to make you want more lsd this spawns the 60s you could argue this is part of what sort of informs the 60s this is kind of what i want to get into with you but you probably know when you take lsd your relationship with the material world radically shifts stuff that seemed mm-hmm. important to you doesn't seem quite as important anymore and mm-hmm. so if you're running a government if you're in a government trying to run 
a capitalist market economy. You're like, don't let the kids take acid. They don't, they're mm -hmm. not going to want to go to work. They don't care about mm -hmm. money. They won't want to go to war. Prohibition, mm -hmm. this leads to, it goes underground. And then you get these mysterious LSD chemists who had to be very careful because, and they still do, because it's a five-year mandatory minimum prison sentence if you get caught with it. And I think that may have changed in some states. I don't know. Anyway, my point is, Sheesh. we had a boom and then a bust. And so you couldn't even find acid for a long time. So for you to, when I heard, oh my God, he's taken acid over a hundred times, it made me think, wow. He's got some good connections, probably. And I bet the acid that you're taking is not bad. I bet it's pretty good. Well, yeah, you know, the thing, I think the thing was, I was, I, okay, so I'm black, obviously. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, in my culture in Atlanta, Georgia, let's say five years ago, acid was, no one even knew what it was. You know, like it was unheard of, you know, like right. maybe a couple of people may have knew what shrooms were, but acid, nobody knew what LSD was. And if you told someone, like, oh, I'm doing acid, they would look at you like a fucking meth head. Like, oh, my God, yeah. you're doing acid? You, you, you basically got second to crack. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you no know, people, like, people are really close-minded in my community. So, it's like, oh, you know, we smoke weed. You know, some people did, you know, ecstasy maybe mildly, but acid was unheard of. You know, until, like, now, but five, 2017, you know, when I first started doing it, it was unheard of. You know what I'm saying? So like, uh, um, um, man, I would when I when I found some people to get it from me, I would buy it in like sheets. So I have hundreds, you know. So I would buy, and at the time, I lived with like 15 of my best friends in this huge house. We had two houses on this property, and it was closed off. And we had this beautiful garden, and it was crazy. And 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 I was so successful that I I just like. I had a shit ton of money. I was like 19, 20 years old and I had a lot of off time, <laughs> mm. you know? So like, we were just doing it every week. And I was just learning so much about life and my brain and myself. And I was growing into this man because at the same time I'm transitioning from a boy, a teenager, you know, to a man and I'm experiencing this shit. And it's just like, and then doing it all these years up until, you know, fucking shit where we are now i've just like it it's evolved me into such a a person i'm so proud of you know it involved it yes. evolved me to being this guy this man who just views everything in a certain way and i'm so proud of it because I, I don't feel like i'm i'm doing i don't do anything because someone else told me to i don't i don't think a certain way because it was instilled in my brain at a young age like i do everything and think whatever i think based on because i wanted to do it <laughs> You know, and I don't know if I would have been that same way all the way if I wasn't to start um, doing LSD. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I, I can remember uh, having that moment where I was freaked out by the reality that this was something that it was, is illegal. Like, I, I remember, and also when I, you know, when I was, um, in high school, when I was in my teens doing LSD, this was like, you know, pre-internet. There was no ability to sort of research the history of it, what it was, what it's doing to your brain. And so there was a massive propaganda campaign by the uh, US government. Uh, and so, you know, they would just tell you, if you t take this stuff more than three times, you will go insane. You will go completely bonkers and that's what people thought so same same mm -hmm. thing you had to be very careful about who you told that you were like using this substance because they they mm -hmm. didn't differentiate it from pcp from heroin or from any of the like other drugs mm -hmm. out there and they would treat you differently mm -hmm. but yeah that that was my sort of that that was a real interesting moment for me when you realize like my god the U.S. government is actively suppressing something that seems to be really good for you. It's not making me less connected. It's not making me less, pro well, I wasn't productive. I was in high school. I hated it. But you know what I mean? Right. It's not driving me nuts. It seems to be making me happier, more connected with the world, and yet it's prohibited. That was a really scary moment. That's a scary thing to this day. It's still like, why 
with so many great reports out there, why? Why is it still illegal? Why isn't it uh, at least uh, rescheduled or something? Did you ever have that thought, those thoughts cross your mind? No, I haven't. But if I think about it, I always just assume it's because it's something the government can't control. Right. You know, and, and when you and when you're able to tap into that side of your brain, it's like, I think it's just scary. I think people want, I think the higher ups want people to stay down, you know, stay, stay feet to the ground, right. stay on the floor, you know, um, because it's just safest for them. Right. You know, and, and, and I think, and I think a lot of people who don't know anything I feel like it's a certain type of crowd, demographic of people, like just age group and people in certain jobs for career fields, that when they don't know something about something that they've been told that's bad, they do no research. They just deem it as that. Right. You know? Like, oh, it's a drug. That's it. I don't care. I don't care what it does. No, that's a drug. Drugs are bad. That's it. You know? Yeah. They com- yeah, they put it all in one stupid box. And yeah, I get, mm-hmm. you know what? If you and I were the head of the Illuminati, which hopefully one day we will be, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Would we be like, yeah, let them all take acid. Let them all just get Absolutely. their minds blown and merge with the universe and and, 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 and experience a, a remission of their egoic tendencies. Who the fuck is going to do the, you know, this is an old hippie maxim. Who does the dishes? This is like the big question. Who's going to do the dishes? Who are we, who does, this is to me where psychedelics do uh, sort of, where there could be a problem with psychedelics, which is that because of the gift they give you, freedom from identity or freedom from the little I, the gift Mm -hmm. of your true nature, your birthright, you're part of the universe, you're part of everything. Mm -hmm. This can cause you to sort of like, or, or maybe not you, but some people potentially to be like, yeah, so why do I need to like do all the mundane earth realm shit? Like, why? What's the point? I'm going to become mm. a hermit. I'm going to go off into the mountains. I'm going to stop working. I'm just going to like try to ex- exist in this place. But what is, why is that a problem? <clears throat> well, so, the, the, this, the saying, who does the dishes, it came from Tim Leary and Richard Alpert, who are the uh, professors who like got fired for giving acid to their students and who later went on to become like, you know, psychedelic luminaries. One of them, a spiritual uh-huh. teacher, Ram Dass, the other one, Tim Leary, the tune in, turn on, drop, drop out guy. But somebody went over to their house uh, after they'd been on an acid bender, probably similar to yours is what I'm guessing. I've got a <laughs> feeling, man, I can tell. I see. I don't. I don't think I've gone as deep as you've gone with that stuff. Like, there's a place where I'm like, you know what? I'm fine here. I'll stay yeah. in the driveway. You guys go inside. Yeah. But yeah. you know, they they their tolerance had gotten to the point where they were drinking it. They're drinking it out of, you know, how powerful it is, man. Like to just be to, to take shots of like mm-hmm. liquid LSD is like crazy. So anyway, someone went to their it's house. Insane. Roaches everywhere, bugs everywhere, dishes piled up in the fucking sink. They're like, you know what I mean? They're, they don't care. They're, they have like completely like merged with the universe via this wondrous substance. And that's where the saying came, came from. And that's why we, you know, part of being human is we must maintain our, like, we have to shit. We have to eat. We have to do all of these things that are uh, not exciting. And so, yeah, it's, I, you know, I think it's all about finding a way to balance those two. Well, I think, I think as a, as an individual, you should be entitled to doing whatever it is you want to do with your Agreed. life. Greed. You know, so if you don't want to wash the dishes, I feel like you have your own right to do that in your own personal space. Sure. You know, that's why I feel like it should be legal, because I feel like who's to tell who what to do when and where. You know, if they don't want to wash dishes, if they don't want to go to work or don't want to work for the man or want to live lights out in a trailer somewhere, who's to say they can't do that? You know, I just hate the I hate when people abuse power. I respect people of power and with power and I respect having power, but I don't I, I don't I do not appreciate people who abuse it. 
and tell people what they can and can't do and because their life and life is so short. Yes. You, you only get so much time on this earth to walk around and enjoy the wonders of life before you die, you know? And I don't, and, and so I don't, I don't, I just don't feel it's fair to tell people what they can and can't do with their minimized time on earth. Thank Athletic Greens for supporting this episode of the DTFH. I don't know about you, but I don't have the organizational capacity to do what my pregnant wife is doing when it comes to supplements. She has to take over 50,000 different pills a day. She has to organize this, not just the pills, but like by time of day. No, that's not me. I can't do it. Thank God for Athletic greens it is a one-stop shop for everything you need it's got 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right no more looking through your different vitamin bottles and throwing them all in a ziploc bag and puking on public transport because you you took the wrong one at the wrong time no it's all there for you you can develop a simple micro habit with big benefits. You just take one scoop, plop it in some water, slurp it down your cells. You will feel them sing with joy as the power of athletic greens rains down upon them at the molecular level. It costs you less than $3 a day. That's cheaper than your cold brew habit even better you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance they've got 7,000 five-star reviews right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition especially heading into the flu and cold season it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash duncan again that is athleticgreens.com forward slash duncan to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance thank you athletic greens As co-leader of the Illuminati, I hereby declare LSD is now legal as ordered by <laughs> Lil Yachty. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, I didn't order that. That's fucking hilarious. That's That'd be amazing hilarious. if this is how we had our meetings. Um, I know it was that easy. And it was that easy. You just like, okay, call Klaus Schwab. Yeah, we'll do legal last and see what happens. <laughs> last time we tried that, if, I guess it made some good music. Uh, see, see what happens. <laughs> so, we'll see, whatever. Fuck it. So you, you have like a fabulous incarnation. You're, you have this, you're like, it's crazy. Like if you ever do the math, you ever do that? Like you were talking earlier about being grateful for, um, where you're at, but do you ever do the math of how absolutely improbable it is that any given person should like experience the career that you have had, that, that any person on earth should mm -hmm. have that, like, you know, with stand up comedy, man, it's like, it takes a long time, a long mm -hmm. time. Like I can't imagine what that could do to a comic if like within six months all of a sudden it's like oh yeah everyone fucking loves you oh yeah you are mm -hmm. a star oh yeah you're hanging out with fucking drake oh yeah you're do you yeah. so you ever do that math and like like if you do do that math like does it freak you out man like how do you well, make well, it make what, sense what, what, what math what math am i doing the math of how fast 
uh, my life turn around or like what exactly are you, okay. are you saying? I'll be a little more specific. In um, Buddhism, they say to understand how rare it is to take human birth, imagine ocean, there's floating on the ocean is a board. The board has a tiny hole in it and the the odds of taking human birth are the same odds that one turtle living in the ocean should stick its head up out of the water through that hole in the one board floating in the water. Very rare, incredible just to be human. It's considered to be one of the most precious incarnations you could take. But then to become any form of human is incredible. Any form from the wealthiest billionaire to uh, somebody who's just like, uh, wandering, you know, wandering the streets, still all of it incredible. But then to take a human birth and achieve uh, fame, success, fame, wealth, and not just that, but to be able to create art as a job. Oh my God, man. And uh, very precious, very strange. So for me with psychedelics, anytime I look at the fact that I get to do this as a job, sometimes I'll think to yeah. myself, is this a simulator? Is this some kind of video? Yeah. Game? It's funny you say that, man. You know, you have to have a certain type of mindset to even be able to look at, step back from life and look at it in that way. Because with life and with our everyday struggles that come upon us that are so difficult at certain times, it's hard to step back and say, and be grateful just to be alive. Because essentially what you're saying is like, you know, the, I think something, the most greatest thing we should be appreciative of is just being alive and just being able to, experience life itself whether you have one leg zero legs you're blind you're alive yes you know and it's hard to appreciate that with everyday struggles as a human being right like if your lights are out or if you're hungry or if you, you feel like you're obese or you have pimples you know i think we take for granted the fact like oh we're still here you know because people like i, well, I think like i said people take for granted life I mean, people, I think people think they're like, just, it's old, you know, your old life and to live to 80 or 90 or however the average life rate is. And people don't understand like, you know, but it's, but you know what it is? It's all about, for me, I think it's about what you experience. You know, like I've seen people die. I've had friends be murdered. And that's when it really put it into perspective for me that you know, life is so precious yes. and it does not matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you worship God or if you sell drugs, your life can be taken from you, you know, instantly. And, and you couldn't have been doing anything wrong, you know, and that's when I started to truly understand how precious life was and how short it is and how in the blink of an eye, it can either be gone or it can be you know, extravagant, you know, yes. but regardless whether the two, it does not stop anyone else's, you know, it, it keeps going, you know, and, and it's, just, it's sad to think about it in a way if you deep think it, but it's true, you know, like it just, the word, like, like, God forbid if my mother dropped dead right now, my bills don't stop on the first, right? you know, so I can cry for as long as I for as long as I can, then I have to start making more music again. That's it. And I got to go do some more shows and I got to go get some money because, or I'll be crying on the street. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is it's so sad to think about. Even like, think about a woman getting pregnant, you know, and not, and, 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 and being pregnant, being a single mother and having a job and, and, um, and you go nine months and then you get to the point where you can't work anymore and then you have this beautiful baby that you're infatuated with and all you want to do is spend time with your baby. Um, but you have to work. You know, what if you don't have a support system like a mother or yeah. just someone you can truly trust and and you, you have to separate like like that's deep. You know, you gotta separate from this life form you just made. Yeah. To go back to a desk or something, you know? Oh yeah, man. I mean that's yeah. dark. What you're talking about is dark. That's yeah, fucked up. It is. That's new too. That's not how it used to be. That's not like a, that's not something that in human history, that never happened. You know, the baby mm -hmm. and the mother stayed together. That's the, you look in the animal mm -hmm. kingdom, depending on the type of mm -hmm. animal. I mean, unless mm -hmm. you're a fucking snake, 
they just lay their right. eggs and fuck off. They don't think about it, yeah. you know. I don't I don't think snakes mm-hmm. hang out with their babies. If they do, I'd never <laughs> want to witness that. That sounds scary. Yeah. But I, that's likewise. What you're talking about is like uh regardless of how it used to be, that's the way it is now. That is the way it is mm-hmm. now. And I I you know, the these glimpses that you've had of impermanence, I'm sorry you had them. I mean, those are some rough teachings and impermanence. That's, that's rough yeah. though, man. Like that's a that's cold water in the face there, right? To to have one of your friends murdered, you know, that's yeah. that's cold water in the face if you've been entertaining the idea that somehow you're immune to that reality. I mean, when I uh, got testicular cancer, I remember after getting diagnosed, you know, you don't know how far it's spread in your body. It could be in your brain. Mm-hmm. They have to do scans. And I remember the same thing that you said. I'm, I'm driving home. I look up. There's like a blimp in the sky. It's L.A. doing whatever L.A. does. And having that moment of like, this isn't even going to pause for a millisecond if I die. It's not no. going to stop for a millisecond. It just keeps going. Mm-hmm. People who might mourn my death. It's not like they're going to cry for the rest of their lives. They're going to just keep going. Yeah. And that is an incredibly, uh, that can be a, either one of the most depressing realizations you've ever mm-hmm. had or one of the most liberating realizations you can have in this life, I think. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on <clears throat> how much you care about living or uh, I guess, you know. Well, I don't want to say that because that sounds sad because you can... I don't want to, cause like I care about living. I, I, I absolutely, I don't, I don't want to die at all. But I, 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 sometimes I think like, I don't know. I feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, I don't, and I try not to question things, you know. Um, just because I don't know. I, this world is a tough one to figure out, man. It doesn't really make sense all the time. So I try to just like. I, I I don't know. I've thought many times on the simulation thing too, right? Like, is it a simulation? Yeah. You know, is there different worlds where you can talk to your computer and s- scoop into a different world? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, on different planets. And I don't know. You know, I love Men in Black. Men in Black is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's and awesome. it's just like, and just like, I don't know, just the idea of like there being different forms. Like, I definitely don't think it's... I definitely 100% believe there are more people out there. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and more things going on and more lives. And, and I definitely think we'll get to a point in life where it's open knowledge and we'll be able to, to travel between planets. And I think, I, think, I think eventually there'll be a time when you can freeze your life. And that is if we take care of the Earth. Right. You know, if, if or if they find a new planet for us to go to before, but... The main thing is just the time ticking bomb between how we treat our planet Earth, uh, whether it'll it'll give us enough time to find the resources to whether it be branch out to a new planet or create the tools we need to extend life form um, or whatever it is, you know, which which at the same time, I think like, do you is it? Do you like do you want to live forever? I mean, maybe if everyone you love lives forever, too, but like. Hell, I, that would be hell. Then the, yeah, then the world gets yeah. Then the world gets overpopulated. Yeah, you get overpop, you know, and it's like too many people. It, it I don't know, man. It's the future is kind of scary. You know, in so in Buddhism, they talk they like break. There's all these different realms. There's the realms, the realm of the gods. Is it's it's actually more rare to get a human birth than a god realm birth. There's more gods than humans, and that's probably what we would think of as aliens probably or what now we would call aliens or, or, or angels or whatever. But essentially you have a much longer lifespan. Your ability to sort of gratify the senses is exponentially increased. Uh, and it's wonderful apparently, but the problem, and again, this is not necessarily meant to be taken literally though. Many people do. You could take it, as a metaphor, you know, it's like you've been, you're, I mean, from a lot of people's perspective, if we're going to, they would say, well, Yachty, you're a God. 
you're in the God realm. You're there. You're experiencing like, like your ability. Yeah. You want something. The amount of time it takes from when you think, ah, oh, maybe I want to try. That's, based on, that's value, right? What do you mean? Like based on what someone values, you know, if someone value, oh man, you have nice cars and a watch and, and diamonds and a big house, man, you're a God. I think it's based on what you value in that aspect. Absolutely. Right? It's based on like, oh, I, oh man, that song you made got me through college, man. You fuck your God, yeah. man. You kill it. You know, it's like, it's based on what you value in that standpoint. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, and it, it, from this, like, uh, I don't know what you want to call it from this uh, specific like view. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 I think the reason it might even exist as a teaching mechanism is, is to point out like the God, like the most, I mean, the most famous story uh, that articulates this is like, and I won't ramble on and on the Indra King of the gods. He has built this incredible palace, incredible palace. It's so beautiful. Celestial palace. It's incredible. It's so incredible that all the other gods are coming to check out his house, basically. And they're all like, oh my fucking God, this place is nuts! Until Vishnu mm -hmm. shows up. And in Hindu mythology, he's the balancer. He balances things out when they're fucked up. And so he shows up and he says to Indra, Indra, your palace is the greatest palace built by any of the Indras. And Indra says, what do you mean any of the Indras? What are you talking about? And he points to a line of ants on the floor. And he says, oh, all of these ants at one time were Indra too. Meaning you don't, you don't get to stay where you're at forever. Eventually you, your karma, your whatever it is you've achieved will degrade. Entropy happens. Mm -hmm. And then you go from being in the realm of the gods to the jealous gods. Now suddenly you're like mm. fucking, now you're fighting with other gods. Now you're trying to get back to where you were, but you can't. And so the entropy continues. Then you end up in the animal realms, then probably the hell realms. Then if you're lucky, back to being a human again. So that's like sort of the, the whole thing is, yeah, go ahead and value it all you want, but the, and achieve it if you can, but it's not gonna last. No. No, that's deep. It's deep. It's Hinduism. <laughs> Fuck. It's Hinduism. It's deep. Yeah. I'm going to grab my water. That's deep. Fuck. So, what, um, if you don't mind, and I hope you'll forgive me for this, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a couple of musical questions about music, though I'm musically please, illiterate. Please. What DAW do you work on? What, what do now? you work? Do you like work with Ableton or anything like that? Do you have a preferred? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, Pro Tools. Pro Tools. But the album that I just made, this psychedelic alternative album, we did on Logic. Why? Why not Pro Tools? Uh, I don't know. I think I, this album is the first time that I ever made an album that is down this lane um, and in this world. And I did it with a completely new crowd of people you know i did it with a uh, formed a band and we did it in just a different light and they they liked logic better um and um, i didn't even use my actual main engineer i just it was a whole completely different light and um that's what they wanted to use and that's what we used and it was it was great i think we mixed the album in pro tools but uh we recorded it in logic i'm not an engineer so uh Oh, okay, what we use as long as whoever I'm working with knows how to use it. You don't it. get into that stuff at you all. Know? Like you don't like get into like tinkering. I, mean, I, I, I pay attention. I pay attention, you know, and I'm into the producing part. But I'm just, I, I've never really said it takes time to learn. Oh my God. And I haven't really ever said to just try and like. I'm more so trying to figure out the next part of the song while they're doing whatever they're doing on a computer. So right. Um, I never spent too much time too deep into it um at all because i get so deep into the music side that's like i'm just like we're 
you're working on your end, I'm working on my end, we're working together to bring this thing full circle. What is it? So what you is know? that like, you mean like you're working on lyrics, you're working on like, or do you hear sounds in yeah, your- Yeah, well, well, just whatever it is, you know, whatever it may be, whether it be like, oh, uh, some, some sound to add or, you know, lyrics are like the next part for someone else to do. Um, it's, it's, it's so many things, man. Like this album, Man, this album was it was it was a real, real man, it was like I went down a real path, you know. It was a lot of it was a lot of I don't know, it was a lot obviously a lot of acid, a lot of DMT. Yeah. Uh a lot of Molly. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a lot of I was in a different world, man. I went into a deep, dark not dark, it was just a deep other realm. You know, yeah. throughout like the six, seven months um, of creating this super trippy mind fuck of an album. Um, because we had to test it. You know, I had to test the songs and test them and make sure what I'm trying to make is working and just make sure I, what I'm trying to do is doing the do. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, like it's unfamiliar. This is, this is a new. It's like you you don't have the it's not your same word. No 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 no. It wasn't it, well it wasn't it wasn't unfamiliar because I love psych rock. You know, I love psych rock and and I and I damn near worship psych psych cool. rock. So it wasn't unfamiliar. It I just I'm I started doing rap music, right? So it it's not that it was unfamiliar to my life because I love all walks of music like heavily. I'm a big music fan, but I had never done it myself. So the unfamiliar part was working with a band, right. working with, um, you know, um, singing more, um, and, and the lyrics that I was talking about on this album, you know. But it wasn't hard because it's just like I, I, it's only I listen to it all day, every day. You know, I worship Dark Side of the Moon. It's the best album of all time. So yes. like I, I like I I I'm a student, you know. So like I, it wasn't that it was that like different. It was just new. Um, or it wasn't hard. It was just like new. So it was almost like so fun for me because I was entering this world that I'd never been in, you know, like uh, in rap, you know, it's usually like, you know, like a producer sends the beat and you just spit on it. You know, opposed to this world was like you start from scratch, and, you know, you send a circle and you jam and you create, you find what you want to make and then you just build it. You know, it's like a it's like a it's like a class project almost, like right. a opposed to like a one man thing. Gotcha. So it was definitely a new experience. Um, but it was great. It's I mean it it sounds incredible. It, the oh man, how badass to get to have that experience of like psychedelics, uh, cre you know, creating music while high as a kite with a group of people knowing your lineage like that's what's really beautiful about what you're saying well, no. well, well i think well i think for me it's weird right so for, i did the album completely sober but i it would be it would be like after a session of working then we tap into the void and test it you know yeah. I, I always wanted to have i love to have a clear mind when working because i'm tr writing lyrics and for me personally i'm just i'm trying to be so focused because when i am um you know tripping or going down a lane i'm going to the voyage i don't want to be serious you know i don't want to have to think too hard right. I don't, if i choose to think hard that's on me but i don't want to i i hate the feeling of feeling like i have to do something when i'm tripping or right. when i'm like you no know, i like to be completely free the worst you know the idea of thinking like, oh my, like even if, like I wouldn't, I, I need to put my phone on charger. I'd never trip if if I if, like if I knew like I had, if I knew I had a meeting the next morning, or I knew I had a show the next night or two. I just wouldn't because then I think about it and it, it would kill me. Yeah, the idea of like, oh, it's too much. But I, but also another crazy thing about me is. I've never, I've never done, except one time, and it was very, it was like a microdose. I've never done any drugs in public, ever. Interesting. Ever. And that's because I'm so, yeah, yeah, never. And it's, and you know what it is? It's because I feel like 
the, the, the idea, and it wasn't until last year, last year, I was a lot, last year? Last year, early last year, ending of year before, when I was making the album, that I even did them, that we, I even did them in a studio. I had only ever did them, ever, at home. Wow. And that was because that was my safe zone, and I swear I could truly be myself and comfortable and relaxed and not have to worry about any mixed energies or any egos or any, just anything, any other entities disrupt, disrupting and interrupting my trip. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, interesting. That is yeah. interesting, young acid head, because, you know, usually the acid route involves taking expeditions out into the world these like ex expeditions when you're tripping i used to do that man i mean i like uh, my those days are, are long gone for me man but in when i was like having my love affair with lsd it was a uh, so fun to see mm -hmm. how much can we function in society on lots of acid and you get good at it you learn how to do it it's a skill set i'm not recommending this for mm -hmm. everyone for god's sakes don't drive on lsd but you learn you start learning how to function in the world and you feel this like weird like secret edge that you have because like while everybody else is in their regular state of consciousness you're watching the walls melt you're experiencing like mm -hmm. the vividness of color and most importantly you're really witnessing the artificiality of everything. You're looking at all mm -hmm. of it and seeing like, my God, this is like a set. We're on some kind of, we're, we're playing a game. Like we're, we're in a long form game mm -hmm. of tragic, uh, of make-believe, like a tragic game of make-believe. And people are taking it very seriously. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, that was the old days. I don't think, you know, I think you're doing the right thing. And now that I'm an old man, like you're, that's smart. You don't <laughs> want to go out there, man. It's crazy uh, out there. Well, I just, I just, I, I, I think it'd be funner if I wasn't a celebrity. But right. as a celebrity, when you go outside, man, you get, you just get ambushed, and you know, people already get anxiety when people, you know, it's a hundred people trying to take pictures, and you just never know what someone's intentions are and what someone's really trying to do. And so, Yachty, was, why are your uh, eyes dilated? What's going on with are your eye? No, I'm saying that's what people are going to say to you. It's like when oh, they're running up yeah, to you. Yeah, What's no, going yeah, on? Did you just get exactly. your eye? <laughs> you don't all want that, that, all that. You know, and I, and it was just, I, I couldn't do it. You know, I, I couldn't do it. So I just, I don't know. And you want to know another crazy thing? Yes. Like the first, the first maybe 30 trips I did, no, like my first 45, 50 trips I did were in the dark. I always did them in the dark. Holy shit, you're hardcore. That yeah. is hardcore. Yeah. But you know why, though? It was because I was so fascinated with being in a I would usually be in my room or in my house somewhere. And I mean, obviously, the trip, by the time the trip in the sun would rise, I mean, I could see the beautiful sunrise. But, but I was so fascinated with being in a place that I'm in every day of my life. And I know what it's like. I know it's a room. I know it's dark. I know it's nothing going on. And then doing acid and completely being in the same place, but I am not in the same place. It fascinated me every time that I'll be in my bed. And I'm like, I know my room. I know this is my wall. I know that's my TV. I know. And then doing acid and just being like, what the, where the fuck am I? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and turn on some music and just going to another planet. And it's like, wait, I'm still in my fucking room, you know? And just like losing conscious and just forgetting about the world. And it wasn't until like very recent that I learned, not learned, but experienced like, man, like not, not only, like I was so fascinated with my brain making colors in the dark, but then I started to realize the actual colors of the world and like the actual having light and seeing the world is even crazier than your brain making the colors up because it's just like the vividness goes to level 3000. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a uh, that is for sure one of the gifts of it is that it it sort of um, reintroduces you to reality. I mean, you it's so easy to get like everything can seem so boring. Everything can seem so you've seen it. You know how everything works. You especially with mm -hmm. music. My God, with music when you put on a song that you've listened to hundreds of times and it's like you're it's like 
you know, you're hearing it for the first time. It's cliche and cheesy to say. It's like, or like, there's so many TV series that I wish I could erase my memory and watch them again, knowing nothing mm -hmm. about it. And it does that for you with not with, mm -hmm. with music. It does that for you with color. It's like you're reborn. Or you're this. Look at this. Look at what you're in. Look at how spectacular it mm -hmm. is. I want to thank BetterHelp for supporting this episode of the DTFH. Look, the universe doesn't always have to seem like some kind of hell trap created by a primordial demon designed to keep us hypnotized and completely afraid all the time. And though there are lots of ways to climb out of that hell trip, one of my favorites and most effective is therapy. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Therapy, it's not sexy. No one has claimed that it was, but I have definitely benefited from therapy. And in fact, the great spiritual teacher Ram Dass, it was the only advice he gave me that I definitely didn't follow until I finally did. And I wished I'd listened to him sooner. It changed my life and it can change yours. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Duncan to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L dot P dot com slash Duncan. Duncan. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. That was the greatest thing about Midnight Gospel, man. I watched it for the first time, thankfully, on acid. And, and I'm glad I did, because if I didn't, I would have never got to get the same feeling from just how insane it blew my mind. The first episode with the, with the mayor, with the zombies. Thank you. Which is, which is, it's just because, and it was just so many light, little elements, like, it's just random, and I know I'm going on top of it, but just like, like, okay, the moment when they were sitting at the campfire talking, and the mayor came over and like cuddled him. It was so like they was talk mid talk, mid conversation, and he just like comes under his arm and cuddles him. It's so funny because that just reminded me of something that would happen like if you were doing Molly and you were having a deep conversation <laughs> and you just like yeah. wanted to rub someone's skin while you're talking. It's so funny, man, but it's so true, and it was just like it was so relatable to me, and it was man, it's just. But but seeing it while I was high and noticing that little part while in this deep conversation, just like. Man, it had me crying on the floor, like stomach hurting, like tears, because it was just so like, it was just, just I don't know, just like a small moment that was just yeah. like, this is not fucking, not fucking real. It's hilarious, man. It's, it's so good. It's so good. Man. So I, good. Thank you. I can't believe, it's so, it's so weird. You make stuff. I'm sure you have the same experience. You make something and you don't know who's watching it or listening to it. Yeah. It's trippy, yeah. man. Like that's trippy to me that from, you know, throwing a message in a bottle out in the form of the midnight gospel or your music or whatever your art is, you, you bottles start coming back and you don't like with letters yeah. from people. You're like, are you fucking kidding me? This is amazing. Amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, cra it's crazy that that way i mean i can't even imagine like you know i again i don't mean to go like get weird on you here but i just can't imagine some of the stuff that you can't talk about i just can't imagine and yeah it, uh, it's uh, you know not to say maybe there isn't anything like that but wow all the data mm -hmm. feeds you probably have that like you just you can't <laughs> say anything about that in but you're just it's you're, a dark world it's it's a deep world 
Yeah. It's a deep it's a deep world out there. Yeah. It's a deep world. It's a deep world. And the uh there the relation there's just so many interesting like connections between uh you know groups of people that you might not and I don't mean in some sinister way. I mean like you I like I've had like cops reach out to me, you know, like police officers who are um uh, who've been like kicked off of the force for smoking weed and are, are like broken hearted and think it should be le- that's what I mean you know it's like mm-hmm. you just don't know who's listening I mean I think that is why it's really exciting that you are um putting the energy from the void as you call it <coughs> into your music I mean I think that's why it's really beautiful because mm-hmm. like you know you connect people with some ideas that maybe they normally would never wouldn't occur to them and that sets them on a certain path that they might never go down you know i mean absolutely i I think if you're making art with some missionary intent you're probably going to dilute the creative process but (coughs) still it's it's a beautiful thing what can happen so when you when you made the show did you 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 took did you take episodes from like an already existing podcast or did you record so when, when, how did you pick those specific conversations? What made you say these were the ones that I wanted to? Well, well, uh, do I, so. You know, speaking the message in the bottle thing. Like when I, I started podcasting when you still had to tell people what a podcast was, and yeah. I get an email out of the blue from Pendleton Ward who made Adventure Time, and uh, it was one of the greatest uh, animated series of all time and fucking genius beautiful absolutely so and i didn't believe it uh because i at the time podcasting was new i didn't i thought i was being trolled so i'm just like whatever mm. yeah sure you made adventure time i truly did not think pendleton ward was listening to my podcast and then so pendleton um he can he like he like he's a you know we hear the word over and over Pendleton if you're listening I'm so sorry but he is a he's a genius and like the real thing and so like (laughs) he uh he was able to uh come up with this idea for the for how to animate a podcast which was uh which turned into the midnight gospel so he would pick out the episodes he picked out a lot of episodes that he liked I picked out a few that I liked but you know man it's like I don't know if you have this with your music, but with my podcast, it's like, how do I pick out one episode or whatever? Like, this is the one I want out there. It feels so puffed up or something. So he helped me pick right. some out that might work. And that's, it, it was not, it, there wasn't any like real structure to how we did it. It just, we grabbed some that stuck in our heads. And, 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 um, but and as far as animation, did you just say what you wanted, or you just let the animators just go crazy? Okay, so this is the coolest man. You got to do a, you got to do animation sometime. You got to get in that world. Yeah, it's, the it's, it's insane. It's the it it is the it is the most incredible weirdest process and the coolest group of people. Like these are like it reminds me a lot of stand up. And I'm probably, it's probably similar to music. It's like, you know, you kind of have to be taken under somebody's wing. It's, it's, a, there's a hierarchy mm-hmm. there and you, it, it's a slow process. If you want to be an animator or may, like it's a, it's an inside club. Pendleton was like some wizard who just came to my house and was like, come, come with me into this place. And then just yeah. took me into the deepest core of it, you know, but, um, yeah, man, you, the animators, so the process is you come up with beats. So we would have an idea for an episode, like uh, uh, the prison episode, you know, and in that you come up with beats for this repeating loop. Uh, and then you give those beats to storyboard artists who then sketch th- those out into uh, something that will later turn into the animation. And so the, the revision process is visual in the sense that, that you look at the things that they've drawn and then you say, oh, don't do that or add that. And because it was Pendleton, we were lo- everyone working with us, they were amazing. And so they just give you these gifts, man. They like interpret what you say. They give you like their idea of what it is, which is usually hilarious and funnier than anything you ever imagined. And then you tweak it. 
and add stuff to it or add, I mean, there is such a joy knowing you have a team of artists around you and you can literally ask them to draw anything and they will do that for you. They will draw anything in your head in their own style and then add to it their soul, their art. Oh God, it was the best, man. You would love it. Maybe that's your next step, yeah. Yachty. Animated shows. I've been, I've been I've been trying to. I've been trying to. I've been trying to. Man. I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm working on it. I you mean, are? You know. You're working on an animated? You have an idea? For, we, don't, we don't have to get I'm into it. I'm trying to. Yeah, I do. And I'm I'm trying to bring it to life. We're going to see. We're working on oh it. Oh, my God. With your music? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, not not music. Not no, music. I'm saying no you can add involved. your music to it. Serious. I'm saying if, if yeah. you wanted to, you yes. could like help make music for yeah. it. I don't mean. Which is so crazy. Speaking of music, I love some of the music in Midnight Gospel. I thought like when the credits would run. Did you make music? Yes, did I, you make music I did. for it? I can't believe you said you that. You made some pretty trippy. You made some pretty trippy like songs that actually were really, really good. That would actually. I can like, die now. Really? I'm done. Good. My incarnation no, some good is shit. complete. I'm out. I'm done. I'm finished with my life's work. Goodbye, everybody. Nice so, meeting you, Yadi. I'm going up to the mothership now. I'm going so back to me, Alpha Centauri. You have to tell me, what was that? Did, did you secretly want to make music? Was that just like a, a, a way for you to tr try it out? Or how? what was that about? I love making music, but I never had the confidence or sense of like, oh yeah, I'm going to make music. I'm going to, I'm mm -hmm. going to be one of those people. So I, um, when I was in college, um, you know how you meet people in your life that just fucking derail you. Like you are going to go in one direction and then you meet somebody and that like in a good way derails you. So I met this musician, Emil Amos is his name. He's has a band called the Holy Sons, lots of bands. He's like the drummer for this band. Um, you would like, like his music a lot, but this kid, when I was in college, he just had a, a four track and you know, he would make the most beautiful music, like really beautiful, like good, incredible mm. music. And we got to be friends because of Pink Floyd, because my dad mm. used to run a shopping center and one of the, the CD stores, had closed down and so he got all the CDs and my dad had just mailed me a bunch of Pink Floyd CDs. And I'm sitting in the cafeteria and Emil, like who actually at the time I thought was an asshole. He would like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, you know, I'm like, we're in college, he, you're fucking off. He would like not, you know, you're not paying attention in class. I was such a nerd, but like, um, he came and sat down with me and was like, you like Pink Floyd, Do you like this? I'm like, yeah, he's like, you wanna come listen? to let's go listen to some of this. So I went to his dorm room and that's when I saw it, the four track. That's when I saw the guitar. That's when I heard like, holy fuck, this, you can make music by yourself that sounds really good. And he introduced me to Lo-Fi, Daniel Johnston, Sebado, all the basement, beautiful basement indie shit that I'd never heard before. And anyway, so, you know, he showed me it's possible to do stuff, to make music with what you have. And ever since then, I've been drawn to like making music, but I never have, I, I do it as a kind of meditation or like a, I do it for podcast intros and, uh, and Pendleton, you know, it's one of the great gifts he gave me was he's like, why don't you make songs? You know, he encouraged me to make songs for the credits rolling. Yeah. And I never would have done it otherwise. I never would have like put my own music on my own show out of respect for people like you, for like <laughs> musicians, you know what I mean? But he, enc he encouraged me to do it, so I did it. And then Joe Wong uh, is the music producer. He he would help like, you know, fix the tracks and stuff because especially in those days, I had no idea what I was doing. I've gotten a little better since as far as like it, engineering. Man, it sounds fucking great. It's fucking great. I'm telling you, I, I still don't understand. Well, I, I think, I. My, I, I've, I've sat many times and tried to realize why it doesn't have three, four seasons. And I think the only idea I can possibly come up with is just that a lot of people, are, as many people are tapped in, there's still a lot of people who don't get it. Yeah. You know, who don't understand. It, it's That show is such for like a certain type of person. Yeah. You know, like, it's not like, that's not the show, you know, like moms and fucking daughters and families Floor are watching, lava. you know. 
It's not you floor is lava. It's exactly. not accessible. You know, they. I. I have like very little bitterness towards Netflix. I mean, if you get canceled, there's no way you're not going to have a slight bit of bitterness. And if you if you don't admit that, no, you're not fooling anybody. It hurts, man. There was another. There is another season in my head of of the show. Um, uh, but that was pretty much it. That's just, like there's two. There shit was supposed to be two seasons in my head, but the, you know why I got canceled, man? It got canceled because not enough people watched it. And Netflix is a business, yeah. and it was expensive to make. Right. And they're just like, you know, like yeah, we're like the, the the executives we worked with were so fucking cool, and they're like, this is the beautiful thing. I can't believe we got to make this, you know, but uh it's not it's netflix it's gotta it's gotta right. that algorithm tells them whether or not it's profitable based on subscribers and if it's not they cancel you that's just i can't yeah. get mad at them for that they let them let me make something i'm talking to you now because of it you know but yeah yeah it wasn't accessible enough if like but if we had tried to make it accessible enough it wouldn't have been the show it was so exactly that's the problem. That's that. That's but that's that's well said. You know, if you were to try to appease the masses and make it something in, enjoyable for everyone to watch, it it may it wouldn't have been what it is. That's exactly right. And 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 so that and I you know Pendleton he'd already made Adventure Time. It's like you know his his none of us were thinking as we were making it like i honestly was like fully prepared for like absolute flop like after we made it i'm like man this shit's too weird for anybody like no one i don't know if people are going <laughs> to respond to this at all like what have we done i was so thrilled that it was well received i mean that's enough for me i mean would i have liked mm. it if it had been like the walking dead or something sure D is there <laughs> did, Yachty we built that world like man people don't understand how deep we went into the world of the chromatic ribbon like nothing was anything you hear in that show any weird sounding phrase or everything was connected to a world that we built we I went as far yeah. as like how do these simulators work how long does it take them to like generate novelty artifacts for people to get what happens if you run them too long what like we went deep in into it and so i fell in love with that world and wanted to like do another uh season to sort of like get show people more about what the chromatic ribbon was who the progenitor was but i'm so happy mm. it exists at all you know yeah i mean I'm, I'm sure that was a hell of an experience man I had just had my first kid and I also was making my first TV show. So it was the most mind blowing year of my life. Thank you, Lumi Labs, for supporting this episode of the DTFH. Lumi Labs has done it. They have created the perfect microdose of THC. If you're like me and you don't have time to walk that weird tightrope that you can find yourself on when you eat an edible, where at any moment you feel like you, you might go sliding off into a paranoid, crazy town, and you are going to love Lumi Labs. I've tried other THC gummies and they're hit or miss, but Lumi Labs hits the bullseye every single time. I love these things. They just dial in that nice, warm, sweet, creative space that comes from the perfect dose of a gummy. Even better, they're available nationwide. That's right, you can fly with them. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com, use code DUNCAN to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Again, it's microdose.com, code DUNCAN, to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. I swear by these things. They are amazing. You can find the links in the show description at duncantrussell.com, but again, that's microdose.com, code 
Danke. I had just had my first kid and I also was making my first TV show. So it was the most mind blowing year of my life. It was just mind blowing. I mean, you, you, you have recently had a kid, correct? I have, I did. And I, and it's funny. I had my kid the month I started making my album. Oh yeah. So it was like almost similar to you. You know, like, you know, making your first show, I was making my first, you know, psychedelic album that meant the world to me. Um, so it was definitely, a, it was, it was hand in hand experiences. How did, now, how, like, how did you work, like, my experience with that is like, and I feel like you kind of like alluded to this earlier, but here you have this being that is the most beautiful creature you've ever seen in your life that mm. you love more than anything but then also here you have like you, you know the the your your creative outflow into the universe and like the you know you want like how do you balance it out how like you can't how do you mm. there's no way to balance it out so it was a little bit of like a bittersweet experience in the sense of like, I was barely seeing the kid. I'm coming, I'm leaving early in the morning. I'm coming home late yeah. at night. I'm fucking tired. Yeah. You know, my wife is like, thank God she's like well, the way she is, but Jesus Christ, like she was, a, might as well have been a single mom. You know, like I was, yeah. I, there was, cause you can't, mm -hmm. what am I going to say? What am I going to mm -hmm. tell Netflix? I, okay. I had a baby. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'm in. The, I know exactly. I know a hundred percent. I know exactly what you're saying and how you fell in that that experience. Hundred percent. How are you dealing yeah. with it now? How are you working with it? Um, trying. Yeah. You know, um, the attachment to her mother is so strong now. How old is uh, she? She's one and oh, one yeah. and one and one and. Two months, okay. one two months. So her attachment to her mother is so strong right now. So I'm just trying to build the connection. It'll come. Yeah. Is this your first? Mm -hmm. Okay, one in two months. I mean, this is the thing, man. They're they're like, I'm sorry if this offends people, but they can give a shit about you. Like they love yeah. you. They know your daddy yeah. at this point, but like a little baby. I'm sorry, but like good luck yeah. good luck where are your breasts you start lactating yeah. and you might have a friend yeah so it's right. like you know that's real that's real they love you they want you they want I mean, i'm not saying that like the the father in that situation is irrelevant but i think the not right the 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 you know like your job is like very de it gets it, they they you know they start like once they tune in to you oh my god it's the most incredible thing the first time i could said dad he literally leaned in and whispered it in my ear. I'll never forget it. He's like, <laughs> Daddy. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's the first of many <laughs> nuclear love bombs. He exploded in me. <laughs> yeah, that's tight. Yeah. That's tight. Oh, man, that's great. I got it. Man, let me ask you. Um, I don't want to go too deep, but I've – because I, I see we're at time and then I don't want to hold you, but you're not I, I holding had, me. Hey, you tell I, me what time you have. I could talk to you forever, man. Whatever you got, you let me know. What I'm sure you're busy as hell. Sick. I I, I am, but they could wait. I, uh, I, I, so randomly, right? I started having this thought, and I, I um <clears throat> I asked Drake this question because he's one of my best friends and he's such a smart guy. I got. I want to go to it. I'm going to the question in my notes, and I just want to. I've been having this conversation with people. Um, basically, so there'd be a thing where I'd maybe be talking to someone, right? And they, no, oh, this is how it started. So I was in a studio with a couple of homies in LA and they were like, I don't know how we got to, but someone's like, man, how much did your child weigh when she came out? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. 
right? And then they're like, they're like, you you don't know how much your kid weighed when he came oh, out. You don't, you don't. And I was like, I was like, no. And then I said, also to tell you the truth. I don't know when my parents' birthday are. I know it's in January. I've never missed it. I've never missed my parents' birthday ever. I'm all, I've all they have everything they want. They they always get whatever they want for a birthday, they get it. But personally, I just I, I know that it's in January, but I don't actually know the date, right? So then it caused this question in my head. The question is, why do people why do people follow traits? that come from years of brainwash and harmless manipulation. As far as like thinking that we have to know certain things that genuinely don't matter, yeah. you know? Like I, my, I obviously love my child to death more than anything in life and me not knowing the weight that she was when she came out does not make me love her any less. No. It doesn't mean she's gonna have a world any less more fortunate than I, much more fortunate than I had growing up, you know, All but right. like, it's this thing in society that like people feel like certain things in life, you have to know, or you have to do like you, how you don't know your parents' birthday or how, how like, I don't know, like it, it's just, but I, but it's just from years of brainwash of people thinking certain things you need to know, yeah, you know, or you, you but really don't fucking matter. You know, if you know them, that's great. But if you don't know them, it doesn't make you a shit person, you know? Um, yeah right or it doesn't make you any less any less than you know it doesn't mean you love someone or care about someone any less you know what i'm saying dude right now i would bet ten thousand dollars that somewhere sadly there is a kid in like a dog cage being fed bowls of shit and their parent mm -hmm. knows how much they weighed when they were born. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. no connection to mm -hmm. uh, quanti quant quantifying. To, to We're talking about quantification of reality. It's like, yeah, I don't remember my parents' birthdays. And do I feel shame about that? Yes. Why do I feel shame about that? Well, exactly what you're talking about. At some point, mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, I guess somebody got into people's heads and said, knowing numbers is more important than how you feel. Like articulating numbers mm. is, means more than the, the feeling you have for your parents or your kids or whatever. And maybe the, maybe the reason is, is because how do you quantify that? Like imagine if somebody was like, you know, can, can you come up with a, a number that represents how much you love your mom? Like, what number do you love your mom at? What? How much does your love weigh? What size is your love? It, it, it's it's mm -hmm. unquantifiable. That's, you know, that's mm -hmm. where all, the entire material universe collapses in the face of love, right? It's like, there you can't measure it. You can't weigh it. You can't bottle it. And, and like, and it's very frustrating, yeah. I think, for the for materialists, for the material universe. Because how, how the fuck can you sell something you can't? quantify how do you it becomes useless in the face of capitalism maybe that's it i don't know but i did i never considered it brainwashing until you said that but yeah i think it is some kind of brainwashing i mean i mean along with like religion and anything else no well it depends i mean the it depends we're, we're talking about the like let's say Christian. I mean, you can't come out. You can't. You can't come out of. You can't come out of the womb a Christian. You know, like, or you can't come out of the womb an atheist. You know, that would be amazing. That would be fucking amazing <laughs> if somehow your baby came out and was like Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins said that death is the anesthesia that saves us from the pain of life. <laughs> what did you make me for? This sucks. God, I'd love That's that crazy, baby man. atheist. <laughs> The most annoying baby. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. No, man, I don't think you can. I think that, like, yeah, I remember once I was meditating and um, I just realized how funny it was that I was thinking this was Buddhism. I'm like, you know, I'd given over the experience of meditation to Buddhism, which Buddhism doesn't ask you to do, but I had in my own mind connected something that has existed much longer than any religion to a religion and so i think where the brainwashing that you're talking about would happen is where someone who is considered a leader in any given religion 
claimed ownership over mm. something that preceded the existence of that religion. That's where shit gets weird, right? Like nobody can own, nobody owns anything really, much less mm. like no one, no one can lay claim to this or that, uh, mm. you know, to the fundamental qualities of humanness. So, you know, many people, many people are pretty good at doing that and making people feel really guilty uh, about it. Yeah. How could I be experiencing this if I'm not a Christian? How could I be feeling this if I'm not a Buddhist? I mean, I was watching your interviews, man. A, a lot of the things that you were saying, I'm like, oh, fuck. He must be Buddhist or something. You know, I did the thing to you just from hearing you talk man, about your own philosophy. Yeah, no, I mean, well, you know what it is? I, I think I just... I don't, I don't really, I don't really, like, religion's interesting, it's, it's an interesting conversation, you know, I don't really know where I, uh, I don't know, I just don't, I don't I get too religious, you know, I'm more spiritual, Yeah. Um. Uh, and, and it's solely because I've just, the experiences I've had with crooked pastors, you know, and, and, sure. and just crooked experiences where, like, you know, people just are, hateful and judgmental towards someone as a person based on their career or how they look or the way they dress yeah. or I've even seen it towards hatred towards people of their choice of sex oh yeah you know who they love and who they want to be with and I'm just I, I in my heart I can't see how that's right no in any religion how is it right to shame someone because of who they genuinely love you know, or because they have tattoos on their face or because their pants are sagging or, or whatever. Yeah, man. You know, like, I just don't, I don't get it, you know, which pushed me away from the idea of committing completely to Christianity, you know? Yeah. It just started to make it sound fraudulent. You know? Yes. I mean, this is one of the tragedies of, like, false teachers is that they, they, like, you know, I have in my dark, very paranoid moments speculated, my God, like, it's almost like it, if there is a Satan, that that being wouldn't be the thing that went around like burning Bibles or crucifixes or something or like shitting on altars or whatever. That being would be the thing that infiltrated the whatever the particular religion was and posed as a representative of the religion while doing exactly uh, to other people, what apparently happened to you? Mm -hmm. Diluting, showing hypocrisy, showing that mm -hmm. it's, and then what ends up happening is instead of like going in on your own, minus the priest class, you just are like, fuck that. Fuck that. I'm not, I don't want to be involved in that homophobic, fucking repressive, bull, sex shaming bullshit. And then you abandon ship, mm -hmm. which, why wouldn't you? I mean, Mark Twain has my favorite quote on religion religion is what happened. When the first con man met the first fool, <laughs> it's like, mm. yeah, you know, it's like you're selling what? And you don't have to pay taxes. They don't have to pay taxes. Mm. So, yeah, man, I, I think it's like, you know, one of my favorite, when I, the first time I experienced Christ consciousness was when I was on LSD reading the book of John. Highly recommend mm. Bible study while on acid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Book of John on acid. It's like, holy shit, this is not what the pastor was telling me about. Like, whatever this is, is not the same. And and I think that's be what's beautiful about it. You know, it's like a secret. It's a secret for you. Why am I doing it? I'm not, I'm a fucking Buddhist. What I'm going to convert you, Yanni. Just <laughs> accept the Lord into your heart. No more profanities in those raps. Yeah, I know, right? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I respect everyone's. I respect everyone's identity, you know, and, yeah. and what you associate with. And I would never try to make anyone see something the way I see it. I just, I am only one man. Yes, that's it. I, you know, and it. yeah, and I'm, I, I, and I would, I don't know. I, just, I'm. I'm, you know, I don't work for a court system. I'm not a judge. Right. You know, so I don't judge anyone. You know, I'm not. I'm not here to tell anyone what's right and what's wrong. I just have my own thoughts of life, and that's that. It's exhausting. Like, 
it's exhausting to judge. Judgment is so exhaust. Like just retire from retire from the profession of judgment. You'll have so much more energy, and it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. That one of my teachers, Ramdas, is one of his core tenets. Even though he wouldn't call it a tenet, was we work on ourselves so we can help the people around us. That's it. Don't try to make somebody mm -hmm. else your home renovation project. You know, don't 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 mm -hmm. get into that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I think sometimes people do it, or even like bring people down to try and pull themselves up. Oh, the drowning method, like the classic mm -hmm. drowning method. You're drowning, and then you get around somebody and fucking like use them as some kind of horrible gasping ladder. Flotation device. Yeah, man, that's it. You yeah, people use other people as oh fuck. People use other people as flotation devices. They do. Mm -hmm. They just float around the ocean of life on other people, ignoring that the other people are clearly drowning, not even considering, you know, if your flotation device goes down, you're going down too. Absolutely. Well, that's that's the self-centeredness of people. Yeah. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate because they think they're drowning. It's like, you know, number one, you're not drowning. You just think you are. It's a, the, uh, I think you can see him back there, the dude smoking a cigarette. That's Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, who is uh, another Buddhist teacher that I love. And he said, the bad news is you're falling. The good news is there's no ground. <laughs> so a lot of people, they, they mm. think they're drowning because they don't understand that they can breathe underwater. You know, they don't realize, like, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're just panicking underneath the panic everything's fine you're fine man i'm right yachty i don't want to hold you up man i don't know what your time schedule is so i uh, you know i could i have as long as you've got man you got people waiting on you i don't want to yeah I, I i yeah i do i need to i, I need to be somewhere but this is so fun man I, I i hope we can can we can we can we do another one sometime anytime you Anytime, I will uh, just to like continue chatting with you, man. We could just it, we I'll turn the podcast into just conversations with us. <laughs> yeah, man. We 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 have to we have to keep in, in communication and conversation man. for sure, man. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm the number invested. I have for you still works. I don't know, but no, I ch I changed my numbers, but I have your number, and I'm definitely going to text. Text you. Text me and offline if you like. Not that I have like a lot to offer in that room, but if you have any animation questions <laughs> or if you, I would love to hear your idea what you're cooking up over there. I'd love to hear it, man. I will, and I'm and I'm going to tell you. I just I just texted you, so okay, great. we'll be in contact, man. This was this was amazing, bro. Likewise. And I thank you so much for having you me. You made my year, Lil Yachty. God bless you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Much love to your family, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Thank you. Thank you. Howdy, Christian. Tanya, brother. Have a, Have good, a good day. Have a good day. Peace. Peace. That was Lil Yachty, everybody. You can find his new album, Let's Start Here, everywhere on all the streaming services. Make sure you listen to it. Subscribe to the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash DTFH. Much thanks to our sponsors. And come see me and William Montgomery in Nashville this week. I'll see you soon. Until then, Hare Krishna.